Primary images have a philosophical advantage. By studying them, we may examine in connection with each of them practically all the problems of a metaphysics of imagination. The image of the root is particularly suitable in this respect. In Jung's thought, it corresponds, like the image of the serpent, to an archetype buried in the unconscious of all races. It has, in the clearest part of the mind, and even at the level of abstract thought, a potential for multiple metaphors which remain simple and always understood. Considered as a dynamic image, the root assumes the most diverse powers. It is both a sustaining force and a terebrant force. At the border of two worlds, the air and the earth, the image of the root is animated paradoxically in two directions. Depending on whether we dream of a root bearing to heaven the juices of the earth, or of a root going to work among the dead, for the dead. A root is always a discovery. We dream it more than we see it. It surprises us when we discover it. Is it not rock and hair, flexible filament and hard wood? With it, we have an example of contradictions among things. In the realm of imagination, the dialectic of contraries proceeds through objects by opposition of differentiated, reified substances. How we would activate the imagination if we were to seek out systematically objects which contradict each other. We would then see great images like the root accumulate contradictions of objects. Negation then operates between things, not merely between acceptance and refusal of the functioning of a verb. Images are primary psychic realities. In experience itself, Everything begins with images. The root is the mysterious tree. It is the subterranean inverted tree. For the root, the darkest earth, like the pond but without the pond, is also a mirror, a strange opaque mirror, which doubles every aerial reality with a subterranean image. By this reverie, the philosopher writing these pages tells clearly in what a superabundance of dark metaphors he may be involved while dreaming of roots. His excuse is that he has quite often found in his reading the image of a tree growing upside down, whose roots, like a delicate foliage, tremble in the subterranean winds while its branches take root firmly in the blue sky. I believe that there are objects which have integrative powers, things which enable us to incorporate images. For me, the tree is an integrating object. It is normally a work of art. Thus, when I manage to confer upon the tree's aerial psychology the complementary concern with roots, a new life suffused the dreamer in me. The line generated a stanza, the stanza a poem, one of the greatest verticals of man's imaginary life took on the full range of its inductive dynamism. The imagination then took possession of all the powers of plant life. To live like a tree, what growth, what depth, what uprightness, what truth. Immediately within us, we feel the roots working. We feel that the past is not dead, that we have something to do today in our dark, subterranean, solitary, aerial life. The tree is everywhere at once. The old root, in the imagination there are no young roots, will produce a new flower. The imagination is a tree. It has the integrative virtues of a tree. It is root and boughs. It lives between earth and sky. It lives in the earth and in the wind. The imagined tree becomes imperceptibly the cosmological tree the tree which epitomizes a universe, which makes a universe.